I love you. What if you could never hear these words spoken to you again? Would you be sad? Well, this is everyday life for Yuki Itose, a first year university student who's been hearing impaired since the day she was born. And while the sound of I love you may have never reached her, one day she meets this boy who's got a passion for travel and cultures. She finds another sensation that creates love flutterings of the heart. Her world that was previously closed due to her never fitting in with normal society, now being flooded in with the ways of the world he wanted to share with her. This is the heartwarming story of a sign of affection. So let's get started and watch the signs of love bloom. Is love like the snow? Does it arrive silently with no fanfare? Will it fall from the cloudy skies above and color the world with its hue? This is what our protagonist wondered. The train announced its stop to Hashimoto in coming. However, to Yuki, there's only silence. She smiles, clutching the bag containing the cute dress she got on a discount. As she stares at the window, a man touches her shoulder. This girl is startled as he's a foreigner who's asking for directions. She tries to gesture apologies because she cannot speak, but the man doesn't pick up on it. That's when this white-haired boy asks the foreigner if he needs help. Yuki is relieved because the boy saved her. She's familiar with him. His name is Itsuomi Nagi, and he's in the same college club as her best friend Rin. On the next stop, the foreign man gets off and they wave their goodbyes. And when Yuki moves her hair, she reveals the hearing aids nested in her ears. She tries to communicate using sign language, but upon realizing it isn't reaching Itsuomi, she starts to type what she wants to say on her phone, but he stops her to ask if she can read his lips. With him getting so close, she gets a little nervous, but she conveys she can a little bit. Itsuomi tries to tell her that the foreign man spoke Japanese just fine. However, the girl only gets more nervous, feeling as if she's being looked at like some zoo animal. She then pulls up her phone to show the two of them go to the same college. He says he's getting off on the next stop, and Yuki thinks it's nice that he's purposely making his lips much easier to read. As Itsuomi takes off, he pats her head and says his goodbyes. And as Yuki continues to her destination, she reflects on how he was so considerate during their first meeting, even saying, see ya, while emphasizing his lip movements. Yuki was born into a world where sounds don't sound like anything. So she didn't realize until she got off the train that the vibrations she'd been feeling were actually coming from her heart. The next morning, Yuki got up and readied herself for school. She waved her mom goodbye and on her way, she was in high spirits, waving to her friends at school with a lot of vigor. After the lecture, she asked her friend Rin about Itsuomi. She explains he just came back from Canada and that he goes backpacking overseas quite often. That would explain his massive bag. Rin thinks Yuki looks so cute. She must be in love, but Yuki blushes while trying to dismiss the claims. Okay, well, maybe she's just crushing. Rin tells her that's okay. She has someone she likes too. It's Itsuomi's boss slash cousin from his part-time job at a cafe bar, a place that Rin suggests the two of them eat at sometime. Yuki isn't sure if she should, but all she wants is to see him again. However, Rin starts to realize she's getting nervous just thinking about talking to her crush. Every time they talk, she never finds the courage to get his contact details, but Yuki cheers her on. The two are now determined to meet with their crushes, because Yuki wants Itsuomi's contact details as well. Friday night comes with Yuki nicely dressed, determined to complete her quest of getting Itsuomi's contact info. Just like I'm on the quest to get you to like this video and subscribe to my channel. Here at My Shoujo Weekly, you can find fun stories in anime, manga, and manhwa all in the shoujo genre. If you enjoy slice of life like this video, I got you covered covered in this playlist with more to come soon. Yuki and Rin arrive at the Rock and Robin, and even though Rin is nervous about her looks, Yuki reassures her she looks fine. As they enter, Yuki's eyes light up as she stares right at the handsome Itsuomi as he works. Even with cool menus in their hands, Yuki can't take her eyes off how cool Itsuomi is. Rin thanks him for helping Yuki on the train the other day, trying to wingman for her, but suddenly gets startled when his cousin Kyoya shows up. Kyoya tries to greet Yuki as well, but of course that doesn't work. And while Rin tries to explain it, Yuki observes the two talking about her. That's when suddenly a hand touches her face and it's Itsuomi asking if she wants a drink, which makes her light up. Itsuomi hands her a board so she can write down her order. And when he walks away, her heart skips a beat. She observes that for some reason, she can only see the positive in his actions. They take their orders and Rin explains that Itsuomi is trilingual. He can speak three languages. 
Yuki asks him about it and he responds that he can speak English and German and the two girls applaud his talent. Some guests enter and Yuki gets flustered seeing another girl kiss Itsuomi's cheek. She notices it's a group of foreigners and surmises that's probably normal for them. With Itsuomi looking like he naturally blends in, Yuki feels as if he's seen a world she knows nothing about. Experiences she can't even comprehend. She turns her shoulder to see Rin flustered while making her move and getting Kyoya's phone number. This makes Yuki want to get Itsuomi's next but she stops wondering if it would come off as forceful or desperate. She put her marker down and unfortunately, the night ended with her not getting his details at all. Outside, Yuki looked sad and defeated. Rin pokes her, asking Yuki if she wants her to get Itsuomi's contact details. Then, Itsuomi appears, asking the girls, since it's dark out, if they'd like him to walk them home. Rin plays the perfect wing girl by telling him she lives nearby so she'll be fine, but he can walk Yuki home. Then, looking at Yuki, Rin gives her a go get him girl. The two make their way and with a moped incoming, Itsuomi pulls her in close, but somehow, She's more startled seeing his handsome face up close. Itsuomi grabs her hand to walk, and Yuki's surprised that he does this like it's nothing. Her hands were getting numb from the wintry air, but now they're burning up. In this moment, even without words being spoken, she wants to cling to it all. She knows her feelings won't pass through their hands, so she stops him to ask for his contact info. He responds, sure thing. How do I say that in sign language? She then shows him the gesture, and she's glowing, seeing him on her phone. She thanks him for walking her, so with that, he waves goodbye. But as they're about to part ways, Yuki messages him, asking if he thinks the world is a big place. He responds, it's huge, making her wonder how big the world is in his eyes. Her eyes then sparkle when she sees his next message. Let me in yours, Yuki. And the two turn to meet eye to eye, and Itsuomi stares as Yuki jumps, waving at him in excitement. If there was a way to make these emotions bursting in her go away, she wouldn't want to know it. Every time she thinks back to that day, the more powdery, curly white emotions pile up deep inside her heart. She gets startled by her mother, who wakes her up from a daydream to remind her she has to head to school. She sees Rin in the cafeteria, who congratulates her on getting Itsuomi's contact, but Yuki was so nervous asking for it. She especially felt the heart flutters every time she thought back to Itsuomi telling her to let him in her world. Rin then tells Yuki the reason why they're meeting here is because the cultural exchange club gathers here often. So Yuki will have a good chance of seeing Itsuomi. They see him surrounded by hot girls again. Yuki can tell they're not speaking Japanese. Are they from overseas as well? She wonders if he had sent her that previous message not meaning anything romantic but instead that he just wanted to learn more sign language. But even if that is the case, it doesn't matter because she's glad she got to know him better. As he takes off, Rin calls out to him, and he starts approaching Yuki. The thought of making eye contact makes her squee. She sees his handsome face up close, but gets nervous and starts to look away. But no, that'd be rude. She must maintain eye contact. Itsuomi wants to know what she's up to today, but she gets flustered instantly and starts to blush. She looks at her phone to try to type what she wants to say to him, and he stands over her shoulder, only getting her more nervous until she loses it. She tells him she's got to take notes for classes today, and he replies, wow. You're cute, making her wonder if she misread his lips. He gets notice he has to go on his flight to Laos. Fun fact, that's where my family's from. He waves his goodbye and when Yuki goes to sit down, Rin tells her she's totally in love. But Yuki denies this, saying, it's only a crush. However, Rin counters this by saying Yuki is different from yesterday. She's totally glowing, which makes Yuki wonder what the difference is between loving and crushing. Rin then notices and points at a boy by the name of Aoshi Ashioki, Yuki's childhood friend. He asks who that was, referring to Itsuomi. Aoshi's friend suddenly arrives, and the two talk about how Yuki is 100% deaf, unable to hear any sounds. Yuki can't read lips from that far away, so she asks Aoshi what they were talking about, but he just ignores her and walks away. Rin thinks it's amazing that he can speak sign language so well, but Yuki has never been so happy since all he does is say mean things to her. Yuki then sees a message from Itsuomi and Rin pokes her confirming that she's really glowing. Yuki then asks Rin if she's loving or crushing since she can't tell the difference. So Rin tells her if she doesn't know, she should just pick. We then move to Aoshi who's on his way home. As he exits the ticketing area, the ticket admin tries shouting to a boy next to him that he forgot to swipe his ticket, but Aoshi notices the boy to be deaf. He tells the boy on the way out that he needs to go swipe so he doesn't look like he's stealing free rides on the train. That's when Izumi appears saying, wow, even he can be a good guy sometimes. Back with Yuki after school, she wanders while continuing to think about Itsuomi. 
She's thinking about him so much, she can't even sleep, and her heart starts pounding when she sees she got a message from him, and photos of his travels in Laos. She shakes, but finds the courage to tell him these pictures look good. He then tells her he's going to sleep, but he'll be back tomorrow, making her wonder if she'll see him then, making her roll all over her bed in excitement. The next day, she sees him on the other side of the street, and he tells her good morning in sign language. She tries to greet him back, but her fingers move awkwardly. She feels though that her world continues to grow since meeting him. Even her sighs seem to blend in effortlessly with it. She wants this to be love. As he grabs stuff out of his bag, she wants to ask him several things about his travels. He eventually tells her to hold out her hand so he can hand her a Laos souvenir. This makes her so happy and she writes him a thank you. He looks at her and pats her on the head, all while Yuki kept thinking he might have been saying something but she just couldn't bring herself to look at him. Later that night, with the flush red face, she kept staring at the souvenir. It's so creepy but it being wrapped is kinda cute. I honestly feel she would have liked anything he brought her. He must have seen so many worlds she's unaware of. She then thinks back to all her years going to the school for the deaf. Her class was only 4 students total. Everyone was so nice there, yet she always wanted more. She still wants more. She runs, hoping to spend time with Rin, but Rin is already with her other friends. A finger taps Yuki's shoulder, and we see it's Aoshi. He asks her what she's standing around for, and she explains she's waiting for a friend. He sees Rin and tells Yuki they're chatting about their plans for spring break. She responds that he doesn't have to translate that stuff for her, but he smugly tells her, Please, I know you're curious. She gets annoyed looking at his sign language because it's always so pointed and sarcastic, but also feels at times his fingertips look frail almost meek. It makes her feel that deep down, he must be worried about her. Although he had just finished expressing the question, why the heck did you even come to college? Then suddenly, she gets bumped into and it's Itsuomi. The two catch glances and he goes over to pull her head back and forth. Her eyes light up and she remembers back in high school, she had visited several colleges during open campus. She found a world that had so many things she didn't know. Aoshi wondered what was up with that guy. He then tells Yuki to listen up and to not get carried away. She says she's not, and as they continue to talk, Itsomi stares at him. Rin comes over to Yuki and greets Aoshi. He takes off and tells Rin to avoid suddenly clinging to her from behind because Yuki can't hear footsteps, which makes Rin apologize for her potential startling actions. Yuki then conveys to Rin she's definitely in love with Itsuomi, and Rin screams, hugging her. Yuki then does the sign for hang in there, and Itsuomi does it back to her. This makes her heart excited, making her for sure about one thing. She's fallen in love with him. Later that night, Yuki is determined to make a sign language guide for Itsuomi. She found it was a little difficult to translate real life hand signs to drawing, so when she tried to test out some of the motions in real life, her mother walked in thinking she was dancing. On another night, she and Rin head to the Rock and Robin, but for some reason, Yuki feels more tense than ever. As the two sit, a loud ring fills the bar. It turns out to be Yuki's hearing aids when they aren't in her ears snugly, but it doesn't matter since she can't hear it anyways, as she's been completely deaf since birth. Itsomi gets curious about her perception of sound, but Kyoya tells him to stop messing around. But none of that matters anyways, because his interest in her makes her happy either way. She tries to wave at him so she can hand her sign language guide over. Upon opening it, we see drawings with incredible detail displaying all sorts of expressions. Itsuomi doesn't quite understand the hand sign for Su, so she tries to help him and the two end up face to face, making Itsuomi remark that she's become as red as the souvenir he got her from Laos. He then thanks her for the guide, but doesn't think he'll end up using it really, because he won't understand with just drawings. So he says, Teach me in person, Yuki. Her eyes light up, and as she teaches him sign language, she feels his expressions reassuring, like they'd embrace anything and everything in their stride. She becomes so lost in thought, he has to touch her face to bring her back to reality. And even though Rin tells him that sudden contact can make Yuki startled, Yuki is okay with it, as long as it's him. Whatever should she do with herself now that she's fallen in love with him? Then suddenly, Shin and Emma, Itsuomi's friends from high school, come bursting into the bar, with Shin crashing into the counter, almost completely wasted. And even though Yuki finds herself fixated on how pretty Emma is, Shin breaks her fixations by offering her a haircut, since he's apparently a really good stylist. Of course, Yuki has no idea what they're saying to her though. Itsuomi grabs Shin and Emma and drags them to another table apologizing to Yuki for his friend's obnoxious behaviors. Yuki watches and sees Emma clinging on to Itsuomi, and she gets depressed, seeing the way that Emma looks at him. She wants to know what their relationship is to each other. Even with it being time to leave, it just keeps eating away at her. She looks up and 
Emma is clinging to him again? Rin shouts, asking what's with the two of them, and Yuki shakingly pulls out her phone to ask if those two are going out with each other. Luckily, Kyoya tells them that those two are just friends, and that he doesn't think they'll get together in the future either way, but he can't tell them why. Yuki is still thinking their relationship must be special, but when Itsuomi tells her, be careful on your way home, Yuki brightens up and decides she should trust what Kyoya said. Four days pass and Yuki lives her day to day, but there hasn't been a single message from Itsuomi. Is it because he's overseas or spending time with Emma? No, she won't let it eat at her again. She finds the courage to text him, are you in Japan? And he replies instantly telling her he's at the laundromat and asks if she wants to meet up. She lights up and runs outside as fast as she can, only to get tissues thrown at her by Aoshi, who's asking where she's going at this hour. She tells him she gotta go, but when he asks if it's a guy, she just pouts and looks away. Aoshi knows it's Itsuomi and tells Yuki she shouldn't be alone with him because he's probably only spending time with her to mess with her. She doesn't like him talking crap about Itsuomi and decides to run off, leaving Aoshi furious. She makes it to the laundromat and sits beside him. They say nothing until Itsu grabs her a drink and hands her some money as a souvenir he got from Croatia. Yuki then asks why he travels so much, but he decides to hold off explaining until they're a little closer. She gets bright red, texting him back that she wants to be closer. So he responds, she's cute, and she notices he's using the sign language she taught him from before. Itsuomi found the world of sign language to be so fascinating. He tells her when he saw her signing, it flipped his whole world upside down. He used to live overseas, so he naturally gained an interest in cultures and languages. You could even say they were a driving force in his life. Everything he valued was far away and distant, but she's made him realize there is something he values close by too. But of course, he said all that without looking at her, so she never heard it. He asks her if she wants the two of them to be closer. Well, of course she does. He asks what the sign is for more, and she shows him. She wants them to be more closer, more closer, and even more closer than that. So he acknowledges her, grabbing her hands and giving a shake of reassurance. With her hands in his, she feels like she's dancing in his palms. His carefree attitude only made her heart race more. He then pulls her in close and says that she's cute in German. Yeah, I'm not going to try to pronounce that. The two of them then lock eyes, but Yuki pulls away, wondering if he's just messing with her to see how she reacts. But she's fine with it, as long as it makes him smile. A little later, Itsuomi decides to walk Yuki home. She decides now's the time to ask if Emma is his girlfriend. She can't make eye contact with him because she's afraid of the answer. But he just pokes her cheek, saying he doesn't have a girlfriend. He then pulls up her face and asks about Aoshi. Ooh, things are getting juicy now. She explains he's just a childhood friend. Oh nah, he's getting friend zoned. And after hearing that, Itsuomi says he's done with the topic. She asks when the two of them can see each other again, and they promise for it to be soon. After making sure Yuki got home safely, on his way home, he sees Emma who tells him to let her stay the night. As they walk up, he tells her he only let her stay last time because Shin was there too. She then leans on him, asking him if he knows what she wants. But he isn't having any of this, and just tells her to get off. He lets her stay at his place, but decides to take off because he wants nothing to do with her. She tries to pull him back, but he tells her to never do this again, leaving her alone to drink at his place. But then, she spots the sign language book Yuki gave him, and wonders why he has it. That same night, Yuki lies in bed staring at the Croatian money. Since Itsuomi gave it to her, she feels like it can take her anywhere. She then gets a message from Rin, asking if she and Itsuomi would like to go shopping with her and Kyoya sometime for bar supplies. We then see Itsuomi over at Kyoya's place, asking to sleep over. And it's crazy because Kyoya already knows about Emma's behavior. As the two cousins chatted about languages while watching a movie, Itsuomi became lost in thought, thinking about Aoshi. He then starts using the sign language for more he learned earlier. Kyoya asks about it, wondering why Itsuomi is learning sign language considering Yuki is the only one he'd use it with. Then Kyoya starts to think, yup, Itsu is gonna make these two girls cry. However, Yuki ain't crying yet. She's preparing herself for the day the four of them go on an outing. But as Yuki shops around for various creams to doll her skin up, we see Emma who's not so happy. She decides to call up Shin who's cutting hair with a client. In the evening, while the two enjoy a nice dinner together, Shin asks if she's sad because of Itsu. She tells him, of course she is. And upon hearing her passionate rant about Itsuomi, he tells the waiter to bring more drinks so they can forget it all. She thanks him for having her back. 
and he tells her he's glad to drink with her all night, giving a smile with a palpable hint of sadness. Oh nah man, she likes Itsu and Shin likes her, it's over for this guy. We then move to the fateful day of the hangout. Yuki decided to take the train, that way she could avoid Aoshi bothering her like last time. But somehow, he's here too. He asks if she got home late, and she just pouts and looks the other way. The way he plays around with her comes off so childish, unlike when she spends time with Itsu. He then leans on her with a sad look in his eyes, and she ushers him off, telling him he's heavy. Then, when she's made it to her stop, she runs out looking for Itsu, and he surprisingly grabs her, saying, Target acquired. Itsu looks at Aoshi, who had been staring at the two. He decides to cover Yuki's eyes so she can't read his lips. Aoshi gets a little mad, telling Itsuomi that he shouldn't grab Yuki from behind because it might startle her. But Itsu calmly responds saying, Yuki said it's okay as long as he does it. The two just stare at each other, and Yuki, who is curious as to see what's happening, sees Aoshi super pissed. She looks up to see Itsu, not so happy as well. He then walks Yuki away with his arm on her shoulder. She could tell Itsu still seems kind of mad, but he tells her it's nothing she needs to worry about. Just something that guys do. And I think what Aoshi is doing is walking home the loser, unfortunately. In the car, Rin and Kyoya talk about Yuki and Itsu. Kyoya is concerned because Itsuomi has made many female customers who liked him before cry. He doesn't want Yuki to get hurt, but if Itsu was truly into her, he'd be happy for them. We then spot the two appearing holding hands. Well, Itsu says it was just because Yuki almost got run over. Both Rin and Kyoya stare with curious eyes as the two get in, and they head their way. As they drive, Yuki and Itsu practice sign language. And as they go shopping, Itsu calls her name out affectionately. Yuki is still deaf, so the friends have to explain it to her, and she blushes, wondering if Itsuomi has always spoken her name this way. He tells Yuki the next time he goes overseas, he'll take her with him in his carry bag, and she wonders if it's an invitation for her to go with him. The two of them decide to take the train home, that way they can spend some alone time together. Yuki then asks Itsu if he'd like to eat out with her. However, he tells her, nah, he wants to go home, which makes her sad getting rejected. But JK, it's because he wants to invite her over to his place. Yuki stares dumbfounded because it went from talking about food to ending up at Itsuomi's place. As he unlocks the elevator, he assures her it's alright because his parents aren't home. They're living overseas right now, making Yuki super nervous to be with him. They sit down together, and Itsu asks if Yuki had fun today, so she gives him the signs affirming she did. And in response, Itsu comes in close, grabbing her hands to make the same gesture because he had fun too. And then he smoothly puts his arms over her shoulder, but oh, it was just to grab his phone to communicate with Yuki better, I guess. He asks Yuki if anyone has ever said spending time with her made them sleepy. She wonders what he means by that, and her eyes widen seeing his message. It's just really comfy. However, she's a little too nervous to be comfy. But being wrapped in his arms, something began to take over her mind. This clingy side of her. All while Aoshi trips on the stairs, thinking about how he was losing Yuki to that silver-haired bastard, only uttering that Yuki's a fool. Unfortunately for Aoshi, Yuki and Itsuomi continued the flirting as he shows her pictures of his family. His sister is a lot younger than him. She asks where his family is now, and learns they're in Germany, where he used to live. He asks about her family, and she explains they don't typically communicate using sign language at home, just through texts and verbal types of communication. She sometimes even speaks to them, but when Itsu asks about her voice, she holds back on speaking to him because some kids told Yuki her voice sounded weird a long time ago. So he brings in a souvenir mask to surprise her and to his surprise, she starts chuckling, exposing the voice of her laughter. Itsu then gets a call from Kyoya asking if Yuki got home alright. But to Kyoya's surprise, Yuki's at home with him and he's feeding her like she's a squirrel. The two hang up and Kyoya hopes Itsu isn't just playing with Yuki's heart. Yuki stares at all the messages her and Itsu wrote back and forth to each other, and gets surprised when his hands start tickling her. She pushes him away even though he was hoping to make her laugh again. He didn't know she laughed like that. This made Yuki self-conscious, wondering if her laugh sounded weird at all. But nope, Itsu thought of it as pretty cute. Itsu remembered earlier, Yuki had said she was okay with letting him do a lot of things. She even did the sign for a lot. So he asked, how much does that mean? And when she starts to write it on his palm, the doorbell rings, and he sees Emma waiting outside. Yuki notices he's got a visitor, and says she's ready to go, but when he says he'll walk her home, she gets confused because she thought he was going to meet someone else. 
and wonders if she should bring up staying longer since that's what she really wants. As they exit, Yuki notices Emma, and Emma is just as surprised to see another girl at Itsuomi's place. As Yuki goes to ring up the elevator, Emma starts shouting, thanking Itsuomi for letting her stay over last night. Emma becomes stupefied because she was certain she'd get a reaction out of the red-haired girl, only to realize this definitely made Itsuomi pissed because not only did he not want her there, she didn't even stay over while he was gone. As Emma hands back his house key she borrowed, Yuki notices and Itsuomi immediately realizes what this action probably implies. In the elevator alone, Yuki wondered if Itsuomi and Emma are dating now. Outside, she sees Emma clinging onto him and she makes a run for home, trying to escape the pain of losing the guy she likes. However, when Itsuomi sees Yuki's message that says where she's gone, he ditches Emma and runs after Yuki. But the two sadly didn't meet again that night. The next day, Yuki has girl talk with Rin to kind of mope and explain how depressed she is, but gets a keen reminder from Rin that Itsuomi always speaks affectionately with her, which makes Yuki realize maybe she's overreacting, remembering all the wonderful moments she's had with Itsuomi. The doorbell rings and it seems Rin has a guest. Oh look, it's the man of the hour. Rin then explains she's gonna go grab something real quick at the convenience store to leave the two alone. Yuki tries to leave as well, but Itsu catches her. He explains he called Rin last night, figuring something was wrong, and asks why Yuki left without him, but let the question go so she can continue telling how much she'll let him do. Before she answers, she wants to know why Itsu wants to learn sign language so badly, and he responds, Why? Because I want to talk to you, obviously. This makes Yuki's eyes glimmer, and she feels that no matter what she means to him, she wants to be the falling snow, because he is her sky. It doesn't matter how much it covers, because she wants to give him everything. Itsuomi then holds up her hand, and gives how he feels through a gentle kiss. Yuki stares, confused, for someone new to love. She doesn't know what this kiss on the hand is supposed to mean, and she falls over. She's frantic, looking for her phone, but she finds it and sees Itsuomi concerned over whether or not she's feeling lightheaded. She tries to tell him she's fine, but realizes that's a mistake, because Itsuomi tells her if she's fine, then she should look his way, and she turns to see he's already in her personal space. She tries asking him if he understood her signing from earlier, and when he makes the wide expression, Yuki can tell she must have made her feelings too obvious. He then explains his observation that it seemed like Rin would often come to the bar to see Kyoya. So he wanted to know if Yuki had been coming to see him. With her being caught, she feels a little embarrassed, but she still nods to confirm. But he must not know how deeply she feels for him. So she tries to sign, I love you, but Itsuomi misses it completely by being on the phone. He says the bar is booked out for a private party tonight, so he'll need to go in early. Also, he's going overseas Monday, and he'll be back by the end of spring break which made her concerned that a month of him leaving would change him, but lights up again when Itsuomi tells her he wants her to send him sign language videos to study up on them. She'd happily do anything for him. He then uses a bit of sign language to explain once he's back, he'll be sure to make time for the both of them. As he leaves, she asks him about his gesture of kissing her hand and what he meant by it. He just pats her head and asks if it's okay if he falls for her. But instead of Yuki giving an answer, she tells him, He's got to head to work to be on time. Elsewhere, Aoshi is looking up at the sky, observing it to be so cold and that it might snow again. Yuki's mom greets him as she happened to be walking in the area. She tells him Yuki is so lucky to have a nice friend like him, especially because he knows sign language. But he doesn't believe Yuki shares that sentiment. But if she ever has any trouble in college, he'll always be there for her. He tells Yuki's mom that she can trust Yuki in his hands, but with his concerned mind wandering, he asks the mom to give Yuki's contact information to him. At the bar, Kyoya thanks Itsuomi for helping with the wedding event earlier. He then brings up a time where not too long ago, Itsuomi had mentioned he wasn't really looking for a girlfriend, and with him leaving on a trip on Monday, Kyoya confronts him if he plans to take a relationship with Yuki seriously. Itsuomi looks down at first, then bumps into Kyoya to give his thoughts. Yuki is crystal clear, maybe because she's never heard nasty words thrown at her. People are empty glasses at first, and it's other people who scratch them up and make a mess of them, or help them shine. I thought I wanted to keep watching her forever. Her eyes, her hands, and her expressions are all beautiful. Now, I'm no longer just watching, I've just been captivated by her. But all Kyoya thinks is in quotes, bros down bad. 
Does he not realize it? And then appears exactly the two girls of their interest. It turns out that Yuki is spending the night at Rin's place. So that's why she's staying out past curfew. Itsu decides to borrow Yuki for a second. And outside, Yuki asks if they're bothering him and Kyoya. After Itsu says it's no big deal, he sneezes from the cold. So Yuki offers her scarf, only for Itsu to grab on to something else to warm him. And he sees that she wrote she thought she wasn't going to see him again before his trip. He was going to tell her this after he came back, but screw it, he'll tell her now using sign language. And as he expresses himself, she wonders if he knew the weight of the words he was saying. These expressions of love she never taught him. As he wraps her scarf around her, he says, how about we become a couple? She asks why, and he says because he'd like to go out with her. She asks why again, with such nervous fingers. He wasn't expecting this either. He still plans to travel places and meet tons of people, but none of those places will have Yuki in them. Yuki's eyes begin welling up from his words. She starts to lose out on what he's saying. He grabs her hands and says, I want you, Yuki and pulls her hands up asking if she'll say yes. So she nods over and over and he's like, yeah, cool. I'll learn more sign language. Rin and Kyoya are surprised to see the two with Itsu's arm wrapped around her. And he just casually tells them, uh, so we're going out, making Kyoya and Rin scream in shock. When Itsu sits down, he wonders why all three of them have the exact same look. But Rin and Kyoya congratulate the two of them, with Rin shaking Yuki in excitement. However, it's all still processing for Yuki. Itsu then says it's time to bounce, and he'll walk Yuki to Rin's place alone. As the two walk in the snow, he tells Yuki not to worry about Emma giving him his house key from the other day. He was just letting her borrow his place while he stayed at Kyoya's. But he won't do it again. She then notices she got a message from Aoshi saying he got her contact info from her mom. And she wonders, why now? But remembers he and Itsomi were scowling at each other the other day. The two continue their walk, holding hands together. They make it to Rin's place, and when Yuki thanks him, he asks Yuki if she has her passport. She doesn't, but she definitely wants to go overseas at some point. So he tells her if she gets one, he'll take her. And she gets so excited at the idea of going on a trip with her beloved. The two say their goodbyes, but as Yuki walks up the stairs, Itsu calls out to her, but of course, she can't hear it. She reaches Rin's apartment door, and Itsu's hand reaches across to close it, and he embraces her from behind. These hands that hold her, these eyes that gaze at her, it's another new, uncharted world for Yuki. She's even fallen in love with looking up at his face like this, with every expression of his drenching her in a shower of light. On this, February 21st, their worlds came together as one. At the airport, we see Itsuomi waiting for his next flight, and as Yuki sleeps peacefully, she gets a message from him saying his first stop is Cambodia. Later, she rides the train and wonders if he's reached his destination yet. She wants to be able to afford traveling with him, so she's on the hunt to find a job. But unfortunately, she can't read the lips of her first interviewer. Leaving defeated because she probably won't get a call back, she wonders how people normally find part-time work. She stumbles upon the Happy Happy Burger restaurant and decides to ask her friend Madoka advice on how to apply for work there. Since Madoka had succeeded previously, Yuki then suddenly gets a message from Rin. The two girls meet for drinks and we learn Rin started some busy work at a realtor's office. As they chat, Yuki blushes at the idea of calling Itsuomi her boyfriend. But as the new girlfriend in a relationship, she's ready to develop her love with him. Yuki gains more determination and with advice from Madoka, she begins to apply for as many jobs as possible. After all, the worst her interviewers could do is say no. She tries for a lot of places and gets a lot of rejections sitting defeated once again at her coffee table. She then gets a message from Aoshi, who wants to meet up since his sister has come home. Yuki greets the two siblings, and we learn she used to play with Aoshi's sister, Mio, when they were kids. Mio comments on how pretty Yuki's hair is, but unfortunately, she's forgotten most of her sign language skills. Mio has Aoshi interpret for her, and Yuki has a joyous conversation catching up with her dear friend. After Mio takes off, we learn Aoshi had been studying sign language all this time. Yuki says it's amazing, but that's not enough for him. Aoshi wants her to praise him even more. As Yuki tries to head out, Aoshi stops her to ask if she's seen that dude lately. And to Aoshi, the world begins to lose its color when he asks if she's been staying at his place. She doesn't know what expression he's making and wonders why he's using sign looking down. But he becomes relieved to hear she hasn't slept at his place yet. He tells Yuki not to overthink things. He just doesn't like the idea of some weirdo taking advantage of her disability. Uh-huh, sure. 
and in both their eyes, it's evident they can only see each other as their childlike selves. As Yuki walks back, she thinks for Aoshi, it's not about her personal feelings, but that he hates the idea of his sympathy for the deaf being misunderstood. He's been saying that for years, and he'll probably keep saying it. But we gotta remember, Aoshi isn't the only loser. There's Emma, who's been sending messages to Itsuomi, asking him to spend time with her. But she's getting no reply back, sobbing because it's clear he doesn't feel that way about her. While our winner, Yuki, gets messages from Itsuomi in Cambodia, with him spending time playing with the locals. However, he doesn't want this to be one-sided, as he asks for Yuki to send him some sign language videos from her, making Yuki think she's got a doll up with some makeup for some videos later. Itsuomi also hopes the two of them can have a good relationship, and asks if there's anything that makes her uncomfortable, so she tells him not to touch her tummy again. Itsuomi agrees, but asks if he can touch her elsewhere. Ooh. She says, that's fine. Woohoo! Then we get into the poetic metaphors in Yuki's mind again, as she thinks, The sky to the west is dyed orange in the corner of my eyes. I love these moments. As Itsu replies when he gets back, he'll make time for her. She can get clingy with him. She thinks, Why is the sky in my world so enormous? Will this twilight shining down on me soon shine down on you as well? It's been a month now since Itsuomi left on his trip. At times, she wouldn't hear from him for days, but then give her a full recap. He went to Thailand, Myanmar, and India, and Yuki loves to scroll down her texts to see countries she knows nothing about, all while her familiar hometown flows by outside the train window. To her, it almost makes their relationship otherworldly. After getting another job rejection in her inbox, she learns Itsuomi is back from his travels, and gets flushed red seeing his message asking her out to lunch. She bolts out of the train, running out of breath, but happy to see Itsuomi on the other side of the train tracks. She waves at him, and reading his lips, sees that he wants to hug her. He gets close, making her a little nervous. She has him sit down, with her looking around as if she's about to do something she wants no one to see, now spreading her arms out with her eyes closed, expecting his hug. But instead, he goes in right for a kiss? Making Yuki lose her mind, now realizing she misread his lips. He didn't ask for a hug, but a kiss instead. It was her first ever kiss. She was truly enamored with the beautiful man before her, wondering how he could play it off like nothing. As they walk together, she feels as if her heart is gonna explode, and begins to gawk at his hair that is now a little longer, and skin that is now a little more tan. She has to cool herself down. They sit down for lunch, and Itsuomi recommends soba with fried tofu, using finger spelling. He's been practicing during his travels. The two enjoy their nice meal together, and afterwards they sit outside to enjoy the fresh air. Itsuomi tells Yuki he wants to introduce her to Shin, his hairstylist childhood friend. However, she's a little nervous meeting new people because of her hearing issue. But then he holds out his hand and the two walk their way together. She thinks he'll be a little eccentric, but when he opens the door, Shin calmly asks who she is. Guess he's only over the top when he's drunk. Shin is surprised, however, to hear that Yuki is Itsuomi's girlfriend. Shin asks if he met her before, learning it was that time he was drunk at Kyoya's bar. He then invites the two inside, and Yuki marvels at Shin's vast CD collection. Shin prepares some drinks, and is surprised to hear that Yuki herself doesn't listen to any music because she's deaf, and that the two only communicate with Yuki reading Itsuomi's lips, typing on his phone, or through sign language. With Itsuomi reaching out to hold Yuki's hand, Shin notices the glimmer in Itsu's eyes. As they sit to converse, Shin remarks he always thought Itsuomi would have ended up with some foreign girl. Shin was just as surprised to hear, though, that Itsuomi had no plans to get into a relationship, but after meeting Yuki, he constantly went out of his way to get closer to her. Shin had never seen Itsu so proactive with a girl before. Shin then tries to talk to Yuki and asks if she's in love with him, making her flustered because she hasn't said those words to her beloved yet. So she tells Itsuomi on the spot using sign. Shin plans to tell Emma this, knowing she probably wouldn't be able to handle hearing it from Itsuomi directly. He wonders how to minimize the damage, since Emma has been crazy for Itsu ever since high school, and it's clear he's saddened because Emma only sees himself as a friend. Shin then says his goodbyes to the couple, wishing them the best. As Itsuomi and Yuki walked, he asked her if she was nervous, and she definitely was. He then remembers she totally misread his lips at the crosswalk, bring back that moment of their kiss. 
She asked him if that was his way of saying hi, since he just got back, but no, he thought she seemed like a cute little stoat at the train crossing. He then touches her face and puts his head to hers, and Yuki braces herself for another kiss. But he just pinches her cheek, saying this is the signal for when he's going to kiss her, and tells her to give him a pinch whenever she wants a kiss too. It's too much for her heart. But he says, just get used to it. It's now Yuki's second spring in college. She walks until she stumbles upon a sign for part-time data entry work, with no experience required. Maybe it's something she can do. We move to Shin, who invited Emma for a haircut, or really just wanted to tell her his feelings. And as he begins, he remembers back when he had first met Itsuomi, the new transfer student at his high school on the rooftop. One day, when Shin was on the school roof by himself listening to music, Emma had come up looking for Itsuomi, but he was nowhere to be found. She was surprised Shin was still using wired earphones and asked to listen along with him. He looked at her and was clearly infatuated with her beauty. Later, she even offered some of her own favorite music for him to listen to. He tells her he didn't ask, which made it clear to Emma why he doesn't seem to have any friends. But she had recently lost all her friends as well. However, she's become more okay with being alone since she doesn't want to change herself to fit in with everyone else. She then takes off, hoping to hear his opinion on the CD later. At home, he listens, surprised to hear Emma's taste in elegant piano music. He spent his days hanging out with her and Itsuomi, living normal school lives as the best of friends. One day, he has to touch Emma's hair, making her ask what he's going to do. And as he compliments its beauty, she really likes it. He showed his skills in braiding, because at the time, he was training to be a hairstylist. And seeing her bright smile lit up his world. Unfortunately, he just had to ask if she likes Itsu, and she just as brightly answered back that she loves him. She kept asking Itsu out, constantly getting rejected, but she liked everything about him. He was her knight in shining armor when he had first arrived. She'd never fallen for a boy before, but at first sight, her heart was shot. All while Shin was being shot with daggers hearing her love and admiration for Itsuomi. One day, Shin questioned Itsuomi on why he wouldn't go out with Emma, telling him she's so pretty and there isn't anyone else like her. But Itsu simply answered that he wasn't interested in love at the moment, and as he walked away, Shin took that as Itsu would go out with her, but just not right now. We then turn to Shin, getting confessed to by a girl. He's apparently really popular with the ladies. He accepted, but not with a lot of joy or glee, instead more stoically. He was miserable on the inside, believing one day Itsu would get with Emma, believing that no matter how much he himself loved her, he was no match for Itsuomi. He wished desperately for them to get together already, because then, at least he'd be able to cast his feelings aside. As Emma asked how things were going with Shin's girlfriend, we see her dropping the lunch she made for him on the ground, and his girl began complaining because he was always spending time with Itsu and Emma. She wanted time with him too. Shin apologized, but his girlfriend was done with him, knowing he was in love with Emma anyways, which definitely threw Emma for a surprise. Shin was about to lose his mind, but his girlfriend's words were true. However, he composed himself, telling her Emma is the one person he'd never fall for, even if it killed him, making Emma more surprised she was taking strays. After the haircut, Emma glimmers, remarking that Shin is the master at making her pretty. Shin is about to confess his feelings, only to hear her say she hopes Itsu notices her. This makes him almost lose it, just like that day his girlfriend called him out on that rooftop. But he holds his pain inside as the day comes to an end. At school, Yuki attends class with some new note takers, and Rin apologizes for quitting the position. It's just she's so busy nowadays as a third year. Itsuomi comes by, making Yuki so flustered she turns away. But with Itsuomi fawning over her, Rin gets to gush over the cute couple. Rin really wants to go on a trip with them, and Kyoya again soon. And Yuki's eyes light up with Itsuomi suggesting a sign language boot camp. Wow. Hopefully the four of them have fun on a trip together. Subscribe to see that on my next video of this series. But man, feels bad for Shin. Hopefully he can break through to Emma. For now though, watch this next video. It's me, Comfy T. I'll see you all in the next one. Yuki and Rin meet the two guys at Kyoya's Jeep for the sign language boot camp. With Rin eager to show off her matching outfit. And Itsuomi of course reacts by saying, Yeah, they look similar. When she was hoping for something else. Although Kyoya comes to save it, calling the outfits cute, lighting Rin's heart up. They make it to their first campsite, where Itsuomi shouts wanting to learn how to learn to sign mountain, and Yuki's happy to show him. She's happy to show a variety of signs like smartphone and river, but apparently not frog since it scares the girls away. They then take a break with a delicious meal cooked by Kyoya, where Yuki shows the signs for delicious, 
Itsuomi then suddenly feeds Yuki, making everyone blush at the cute couple. Afterwards, it seems Kyoya and Rin decided to take a walk together. Rin suddenly gets a call from her co-worker, an honest office man who keeps asking her out. But she already likes Kyoya, so she rejects him. Kyoya knew she'd be popular. Whoops. He overheard a little of their conversation. Rin had only been with one man, and that relationship didn't last long. After asking Kyoya about his, we learned that he had one that lasted six years. And these days, he's not so interested in the games of dating, chasing back and forth with texts and whatnot. However, he wants to hear about the person she's in love with. Back at camp, Itsomi is trying to grab some fish. So Yuki joins him, but with it being April, it's a little cold. So he picks her up and pretends to throw her, making Yuki grab on tight. He began to laugh in a way that gleamed to her, as it was so pure. The trust she has in him to never drop her made her heart race in a different way. Like if people had a finite stock of luck in their lifetime, she feels like she's used way too much of it. As the two sit under the tent, Itsuomi wonders if something has been bothering her the whole time. She opens up about how she's been searching for a job. That way she can afford to travel with Itsuomi, but hasn't really had any luck. Her friend Madoka is also helping her look, but so far, no response. He pinches her cheek, making Yuki wonder if that's the signal. With a light kiss, the two are interrupted by Rin, who apparently injured her ankle. They need to take her to the infirmary, and in the car, Rin thinks back to her conversation with Kyoya. He did admit dating to be painful, but it wouldn't be so painful with her. He didn't feel good seeing her get a call from another guy. It made him feel cringe. Rin tried to step forward to comfort him, and that's when she injured her ankle. But it all worked out because he still found her to be very charming. Afterwards, Yuki heads with Itsomi to dinner, and somehow ends up back at his place, where she lies to her mom that she's staying at Rin's tonight. Itsuomi starts to get undressed, and with him casually saying it's fine if she takes a shower now, Yuki shoves him out of embarrassment. She borrows some of Itsuomi's clothes, a sweater that smells of softener along with Itsuomi's scent. <laughs> Too bad he's never getting it back now. She spots the sign guide she made for Itsuomi. It has so many memories of the time she spent with him initially. However, reading further in, she can tell how much effort he's put in to learn sign, as it's all marked up. He always did seem to learn the sign she taught him perfectly. Looking at his effort made her tear up. Back at Aoshi's place, his sister tells him she saw Yuki head into a restaurant with someone who looked like her boyfriend. Aoshi plays it off, saying no worries because those two aren't going to last. His sister leaves the room because she can't stand to see how pathetic he is keeping his feelings in. And back at Itsuomi's place, he sees Yuki's phone getting a call from Aoshi. Itsuomi brings the phone to Yuki because she forgot it in the bathroom, and she sees Aoshi's missed video call. She sees in her messages Aoshi apologizing, saying he'll call her later, which actually scares her because she isn't used to him saying sorry. After Yuki showers, Itsuomi invites her into his room, where he offers her popcorn, but all of this is a little overwhelming for her. Whenever he has time on the weekends, it's movie night. So, with subtitles on, they can watch something together. He actually turns off the volume so he can experience the way she watches movies. Yuki then suddenly gets a call from Madoka, and Madoka is surprised to meet Yuki's boyfriend. She's glad he can sign, because apparently she can't read lips so well due to her late onset hearing loss. But good news, Yuki landed an interview at Madoka's aunt's restaurant. Yuki thanks Itsuomi, because with him, even something like a job, which seemed like a lifetime goal, happened instantly. Him being there really gave her a push. As they watch the movie, she notices him kissing her arm over and over, and when he gets towards her face, she scrunches up before getting a kiss, where afterwards, he tells her not to get so nervous when they cuddle. Over at Kyoya's restaurant, Shin asked to meet with him privately, admitting that he couldn't tell Emma the truth that Itsuomi is with Yuki now. They just had dinner and split. He wants to know if there's a way he could tell her the truth without breaking her heart. Instead, Kyoya turns to a question he always wanted to know about. The girl Shin loves is in love with his best friend. Did that not make him hate Itsu? Well, Shin cares deeply for both of them, but he's always neglecting his own feelings all the time. Back at Itsuomi's place, Yuki can't sleep, thinking that regular couples usually sleep in the same bed at these times, right? So she texts Itsu, saying she's happy she got to spend the whole day with him but wonders if this is different than staying over. 
he comes to her bedside to tell her they can save that for later. After all, she got so tense just from cuddling. He tells her in sign that she's important to him, so he wants to treat her right. The next day at school, Itsomi gets sign language throw at him saying, You, what are you playing at? And ooh, we see it's Aoshi who knows Itsuomi understands that, knowing that he's dating Yuki now. Itsuomi sighs because he wants to get to the point already. He knew he'd have to talk to Oshi at some point. He comes up, grabbing Aoshi by the shoulder, telling him to play nice. As Aoshi struggles, Itsuomi drags him across campus, and all along the way, people love Itsuomi. They make it inside the Cultural Exchange Club, where Itsuomi asks Aoshi about his favorite bread at Komugi. Apparently, it's a bakery outside the campus. Itsuomi's favorite is curry bread, but why does he want to know Aoshi's? He asks Aoshi a ton of questions, but Aoshi refuses to respond because he hates Itsuomi. So, Itsu asks why Aoshi hates him, which only pisses off Aoshi further. Aoshi tries to leave, but stops when Itsu says the obvious. Aoshi is in love with Yuki, isn't he? Aoshi responds that isn't it, however. The reason he hates Itsuomi is because Itsuomi provoked him back at the train station, hates Itsuomi for asking a girl who can't hear to come see him late at night, and hates Itsu's bleached hair. Aoshi tries heading out, but Itsu follows right behind, not making Aoshi any happier. However, Itsu tells him to come to the campus front gate at 7pm tonight, and that if Aoshi does, he'll do whatever he wants. So somehow, Aoshi ends up with him at Kyoya's restaurant where Itsu introduces him as Yuki's childhood friend who's going through a misanthrope arc right now. The two have a beer together, and Itsu tries to share a platter with him. Aoshi has the kind of look on his face, now knowing that Itsu can speak three languages, which questions why someone like Itsu is trying to pick up sign language. Well, obviously for the same reasons, because they both love Yuki. It's 1am and Aoshi wakes up, having passed out after his third beer. Itsu tries to cover his tab, but Aoshi decides to place money down anyway. Outside, Aoshi can barely walk, but wants no help from Itsu regardless, claiming Itsuomi only learned sign for manipulative reasons. When he was little, Aoshi was introduced to Yuki by his sister, where he had first learned Yuki was attending a school for the deaf. The three enjoyed fireworks at the festival together. Well, Aoshi not so much. During the show, the two locked eyes and looked away, where he began signing the words, You fool, at her. He felt that no matter what their surroundings, as long as they signed at each other, they could enter their own little world where nothing could bother them, making him only get more hooked on sign. Aoshi begins to leave, telling Itsu to keep his promise, break up with Yuki. However, Itsu says breaking up is a mutual decision. Yuki won't break up with him. Aoshi then questions why Yuki? Itsuomi is so popular, it could have been any girl. So Itsuomi answers logically with why does it matter who chooses him? At a glance, he and Yuki are so different, they might not even look like friends. But she was there in a space surprisingly close to him, their college. He was so glad she went to their college. But even if she hadn't, he assumes they'd have met somewhere years down the line. With a sureness, Itsomi tells Aoshi it wouldn't matter when or where they met. He'd fall for Yuki and choose her every time. Aoshi walks up to Itsomi and punches him, saying he didn't want his feelings to be boxed up. He wishes she'd stop looking at another guy's hands. He then shouts at Itsu, saying curry bread is his favorite too. He's not into taking another guy's girl, so he needs Itsu and Yuki to hurry and break up. However, it seems Itsu managed to resolve their beef as Aoshi begins to break into tears. So Itsu gives him a head pat, with Aoshi swatting the hand away, saying if Itsu breaks her heart, he will come for her. And maybe with this, Aoshi can change and finally grow up. But either way, he doesn't want to lose to Itsu without a fight. On another day, Rin shows off her pictures of Kyoya taking her to the zoo after her ankle recovered. But he still hasn't asked her out yet. Itsuomi gets a good look at the zoo pictures too, thinking Rin and his cousin look good together. After Rin leaves, he learns Yuki has her job interview today. She's totally nervous, mostly because she's super conscious of how hot Itsuomi is. Itsuomi has her hold her hands out for a German phrase which means, I'll keep my fingers crossed for you. Yeah, I'm not gonna try to pronounce that. It's good luck from him, and even with people staring at these two, he doesn't care. Yuki heads her way towards the restaurant, remembering Itsu's chant all along the way, until he sees Madoka's aunt standing tall outside. 
Yuki gets the job, and Madoka's aunt gets fired up. I guess it runs in the family. Afterwards, Yuki heads to the store because her mom needs her to pick up some Okonomiyaki sauce. She gets startled when a man tries to help her out because the man cannot tell she is deaf. But then, Aoshi suddenly appears to help out because she can't read the man's lips through the mask. After that, she hands Aoshi a drink as a thank you. Aoshi tells her if she ever needs help at the supermarket, she can call him at any time, making her a little nervous because she's not used to him being so nice. But he refuses to elaborate and walks away. However, she then gets a message from Itsu congratulating her on landing the job. So Aoshi walks back, letting her know he knows they're dating and they had drinks together, making her wonder when Aoshi and Itsu became friends. But Aoshi says they're not. He then tells Yuki to tell him if Itsu ever hurts her or makes her cry to come talk to him because he hates Itsu. So he'll deal with him for her. Yuki then begins saying, didn't you realize when drinking with him, it's hard for anyone to hate Itsuomi. But Aoshi stops her mid-sign. He doesn't want her to praise Itsu in front of him. As he leaves, Yuki thinks that was the first time Aoshi ever stopped her mid-signing. She could ask him if something is wrong, but she feels as if she'd missed the mark. Aoshi is different today for some reason, like he's become someone she doesn't know. At the crosswalk together, he remembers one time when they were on a train together. She couldn't hear the announcement for the train having an emergency stop. She looked lost because she didn't know what was going on. He felt terrible at the time that he couldn't use sign to tell her anything. That was what led him to really want to start studying sign to make the world a better place for her in his own way. The only thing he regrets is not being more upfront about it. After making it past the crosswalk, he tells her he's just not trying to be so prickly all the time. Concerned for Aoshi, she tells him when she first entered college, she was completely lost. But with him there to sign at her, it gave her great relief. It helped her keep going. She's certain there are people out there who understand how nice he can be deep down. So he should just be a bit more sincere. He sighs and then agrees with her. As he leaves, it hits Yuki finally. How much does she really know about him? She doesn't know if he'll take what she said to heart, but she hopes he'll cheer up soon. Yuki begins her first day of work, and during break, Madoka's aunt learns Yuki is saving up to travel with her boyfriend, cheering her on. That night though, Shin invited Emma to meet him privately somewhere. She bought both of them his favorite cafe mochas. Uh, really? This late at night? She had chosen this place because it's very pretty late at night, although brighter than she expected. He has her abruptly take a seat, and she notices the trembling look on Shin's face, asking him if something happened. He tells her straight that Itsu has a girlfriend, and Emma apologizes knowing this must have put an extra load on his mind. But then, Shin tells her she's got him. He's not saying this to console her, but he wants her to pick him. She then brings up the fact that they've known each other for so long, and there was even a time where she thought he was into her. But that day on the rooftop where he told his ex he'd never fall in love with her, even if it killed him, really shocked her because he was planning to take it to his grave. At Yuki's place, she gets a message from Itsu that says he's outside. He starts to take off so she runs after him. She was so happy to see him because they hadn't seen each other for days. He notices she's in her lightly dressed PJs, so he wraps her in his jacket and the two embrace. The two sit in the park where he hears about her first day at work. She's gonna save up so they can travel together. However, that's still a ways away, so he wants Yuki to pick somewhere to go on their actual first date soon. Later, Rin shows Yuki a promo for the Curry Festival. Knowing Itsuomi has traveled the world, where could she possibly take him on a date he'd find interesting? Rin assures Yuki that no matter where they go, Itsuomi will find ways to enjoy himself. He probably just wants to see her having a good time. As Yuki and Itsu ride the train together, it seems a little emptier than usual. Yuki reminisces about their first time meeting on the train. As they get off at their destination in Sayama, Itsuomi chuckles at how pumped his girlfriend is. They're here to take photos apparently. There's beautiful flowers everywhere. With Yuki staring at Itsuomi, the meaning of took their breath away suddenly hits her. As they converse, we learn Yuki likes scenery and food pics, but loves taking photos of flowers most of all. This is the season where azaleas adorn the ground and wisteria climb down from the skies. Before long, hydrangeas will soak up the rain and bloom, and sunflowers will finally have their moment in the sun. Yuki really adores how all these flowers wait their turn for the season to arrive. 
learning this is the world as Yuki sees it, Itsomi asks for her phone so he can get a selfie with her. The two of them then have lunch together, where chicken always reminds Itsu of beer. So Yuki brings up how she heard he and Aoshi had drinks together. Then Itsu says, Oh, Aoshi? How's he doing? Surprised you, huh? We're thick as thieves now. However, Yuki isn't so sure about that. Itsu notices the sign for impossible, which he thought at first meant she wanted a kiss. A little random, but it makes Yuki's face flush. She's okay with it. So he comes in, face to face. But he pulls back saying, it really is too random. Yuki finds the kissing here too PDA, but she wouldn't mind cuddling. So, Itsu tells Yuki, if it's her, he's okay with everything. No need to hold back. Yuki then brings up the question about why Itsuomi travels so often. It's a long story, so he's gonna type it out. The explanation is apparently so long, he tells her to read it when she gets home. At Emma's workplace, we learn she still hasn't given her answer to Shin yet. It was a little too sudden for her. But then, her coworker tells Emma that she and Shin were in the same boat. Having spent years pining for someone, she needs to forget the rear view mirror and see that what matters is what lies ahead. On the ride back, the train is really packed, and when two girls bump into Itsuomi, they gush over how hot he is. Yuki figured as much, after all, he's quite handsome. At home, Yuki reads Itsu's message. It reads, When I was little, I loved vehicles, especially planes. I used to have my folks take me to the airport just so I could see the planes. I loved traveling even back then. And we see little Itsu admire the Berlin Wall. At the age of six, he moved to Germany. It was fun at first, however, he became upset because he couldn't understand anyone. At that point, he really wanted to go back to Japan. Until one day, when studying German, a soccer ball came his way. And through his nerves, he was able to say he wanted to play football too. So a boy invited him. And that moment he was finally understood, he was overcome with joy. He no longer wanted just book knowledge. He wanted to communicate. That desire made learning so much fun. The reason he travels now is to learn more about the culture, history, and languages of the nations of the world, and also to sate his curiosity. He wants to pass the knowledge on to the kids so that it may someday be of use to them. With this, Yuki remembered the school on water Itsu had visited in Cambodia, and maybe the picture with the kids from Laos was taken at the school he visited too. She thought it was amazing how Itsu had a clear vision on what he wanted to do and how he acted on it. Yuki then gets a little flustered, seeing messages from Itsuomi that say, The other night, I said we could line up our schedules and meet for a few hours at a time. But honestly, I'm okay with even just 5 or 10 minutes. I can't really explain it myself. Ever since I met you, I keep wanting to know more about you. What do you interact with in life? And how do you interpret it all? What touches your heart and how does it influence you? What is it that I can provide you? I want you to tell me all about it because I love everything about you. Yuki's heart is so full, she doesn't know how to respond to this. Her eyes were open to feelings she didn't know existed. But both of them are sure if they get to know each other better, they'll come to love each other so much more. Post credits. At Shin's workplace, Emma meets with him and they're going on their first date. Rin gets a ring from Kyoya and now they're going out together. Yuki finally got her passport and now she and Itsuomi can go anywhere in the world together. Ah. What a sweet ending to this anime. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. I know Yuki and Itsu having their thing is good and all, but I'm actually happier for Shin and Emma. Anyways, watch this next video. It's me, Comfy T. I'll see you all in the next one.